Hey, hey, Chris. She just did. Okay, morning. Thanks for joining us for our second meeting. We may get a few more people in and out of there. Um, the only thing I ask, hi, Chrissy, um, if you are going to, uh, if there's noise in the background, would you mind um, putting us on mute? And I can, that way I don't have to mute you all. Um, it's just that we're recording, and when we send the recording out, it makes it a little better audio wise. Uh, so please place us on mute. Um, and when you are speaking, since not everybody knows each other, if and we can't all see your little faces, um, if you could introduce yourself uh, when we get to like Q and A and stuff like that. And uh, if you have if you have questions or you're having trouble, um, use the chat box, and uh, I'm monitoring it. So, all right, it's all yours, Tracy. Oh, Mr. Weiss is joining us. Awesome. All right. Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see everyone. I see some new faces, see some longtime friends that we haven't seen in person for quite a while. So it's great to see everyone. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Tracy Raymer, president of the Illinois Limousine and Bus Association. <clears throat> and so those of you that didn't join us last month is we did a similar uh, virtual event uh, last month with Maren Graham. Um, and she did a presentation on digital marketing and just all of the different ways that you can reach out to your customers, uh, maintain a relationship with your customers, not necessarily selling to, to them during this pandemic, but just making sure that you're staying in contact with your customers. So if you missed that one last month, uh, contact Paula and she can send you the recording. Um, there was just a ton of great information uh, last month. Um, so th this, uh, today's meeting, you know, we're going to have Arthur Messina and Drew Messina that's going to talk to us about marketing and networking. Um, off of the meeting last month, there were several different uh, questions regarding, you know, tips of, of how to network. You know, once we do start to network in person, you know, what are the best tips so that we can make the, the best of the time that we have together with those people. But also, how do you network on a virtual level? You know, so many of us are doing all of these Zoom calls and, and what are some tips and, and suggestions for how we can get the best time out of our Zoom calls when you might be hidden, you know, behind 50 or 75 different people? How do you make the most of that? Uh, so we're going to have Arthur and Drew that's going to give us a little bit of information on that. Uh, so during this time, I'd like to introduce our board. It's been, you know, we didn't have our May annual meeting that we normally have every year. Um, so it has been a long time since we've been able to introduce the board and I think we have quite a few members that are on right now. Um, so I'm going to go down the list. Uh, Art is not able to join us today, but uh, our vice president is Art Rental of Pontarelli. Our treasurer is Ron Hoy of Cary Limousine. Ron, if you could just give us a wave. Thank you. Our secretary and treasurer as well, I mean our secretary as well as our executive director is Paula DiBiase. And our directors are Beth Cox with Cox Livery. And I thought she's on, there she is. Uh, we have Brian Sheely of Epic Limousine. And there he is. And we have Scott Delheimer of Class Act. And then we have our vendor directors. We have Chris Norlin of Midwest Transit. Sitting back there with some decent lighting today. And we have Chris Weiss with Chauffeur Driven. Two bald Chris's. Right? <laughs> yeah. Big similarity there. Um, so alone, I, <laughs> <You're not alone. laughs> so I, I want to thank, um, thank all of our directors and the hard work that they do. They do meet on a monthly basis. Um, you know, we've been talking you know, through the pandemic it, is how can we best serve our members as well as our non-members. We have opened up the association even to non-members and we've been sharing our information to absolutely everyone. It's just so important while we're going through this ordeal that everyone is up to par on all of the information that we have, you know, what's going on in the city, what's going on, you know, with, you know, our legalities, 
you know, with, within our operations, as well as what is it going to take to reset our businesses. So if you're not a member of the ILLBA, I highly suggest that, you know, contact Paula, um, just so that we can have your name on the list, so that you receive all of our invites, receive all of our correspondence, um, and, and just be up to speed on all of the information coming out, because it's literally changing on a daily basis. You know, I think we're over the whole PPP and the EIDL uh, workshops. I think that's kind of behind us. I believe everyone's filling out their applications now. Uh, to be forgiving, you know, in the 24 weeks will be coming up in, what, six or eight weeks. Um, so if there are any questions regarding those two loan programs or, or grant programs, um, we're definitely available to help you as best we can there as well. Uh, so a little bit about, you know, what the next hour is going to consist of. Our agenda is going to be, as I mentioned, it's going to be Arthur and Drew Messina talking about marketing. Uh, then we're going to move into a roundtable discussion, um, which opens up the meeting to all of you. So if any of you have any questions, have any concerns, I mean, we can talk about our individual operations. We can talk about, you know, vehicle deferments, um, just whatever you may have a question regarding. You've got an entire group of people here that are going through the exact same thing you are. And we can answer those questions or at least have a discussion about them so you can get different viewpoints from everyone. Um, so definitely use that to, to your advantage. Um, you know, you, you've kind of have your own board of directors here to help you through all the challenges that we're going through right now. Um, so that, that will be all, that will be the hour that we'll spend together. Um, and at this time, um, Chris, I'm gonna open, Chris Ways, I'm gonna open it up to you if you wanna just give an update of what you are planning for the November upcoming show um, and what we, what we can look forward to there. Uh, you're on mute, Chris. How about that? Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we, we finally have dates for the CDNLA virtual event. It's um, going to be November 17th and 18th. And, you know, we're, we're still in the final stages of, of finalizing content and the schedule, but we're, we're pretty close. Um, you know, two full days of content, seminars, uh, panel discussions, you know, we'll have the mentoring program, you know, some other networking events. So we're gonna try to make it, you know, a combination of both fun and, and educational. Certainly can't replicate what we do with our in-person events, but we'll, you know, no doubt put our best foot forward with our partners at the NLA and, you know, put together a great event for everyone. Um, definitely gonna be a, a very affordable and, you know, the content will be extremely relevant. So it's the uh, 17th and 18th and just look for some announcements in the next in a week to 10 days or so with schedule, agenda, and everything else. Um, yeah, so that, that is our virtual event. And of course, awesome. we're you know, hopeful and optimistic that, that things will be on track for Vegas, but you know, obviously we'll uh, have to see how things progress. Okay, does anyone have any question, questions for Chris? Chris or Chauffeur Driven? Okay, and if not, we will go on to uh, introducing our presenters for the day. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Arthur Messina. Uh, Arthur started Create a Card in 1986, long before many of us were even born, and he is the industry's leading full service marketing and promotional company. For over three decades, Mr. Messina has taken a leadership position in ground transportation and as a featured speaker at many industry events, he has built a reputation as an innovator and marketing guru. Mr. Messina brings a unique and entertaining perspective to ground transportation marketing. His background and training within the promotional products industry helps him keep his clients up to date with fresh concepts and new ideas. You can meet Mr. Messina at most industry events, I would say all industry events, to discuss your next marketing project or have him review your current printed materials. And I would also like to introduce Drew Messina, who has been with Create a Card since 2017. As Create a Card transitions into its next generation, Drew is at the forefront of this well-known industry marketing business. Drew uses his previous skill set with his newest role as Director of Operations. His dynamic personality and youthful perspective grant him the opportunity to carve out new paths for success. Drew thrives on his responsibility of leading the New York office, coordinating the staff, as well as collaborating with his clients on a daily basis. 
You can also find Drew at most industry events and is actively becoming a familiar face at various association meetings. He currently holds the position of vendor director for NELA, the New England Livery Association. So without further ado, we will turn it over to Arthur and Drew. Thank you, Tracy, appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to have that we're here, both myself and Drew. Drew is in our New York office. I am in the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina office, which is my home office right here. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I do see a lot of familiar faces, but I see some new ones, which is great. So the ones that I don't know, hopefully by the end of this conversation, um, we'll have a little more familiarity with you. Um, but we're gonna keep this for, since we have a good mixture of vendors and operators, everything we're gonna speak about today works for both. There isn't a vendor that doesn't have to network and there isn't an operator that doesn't have to network. Everyone, everyone has to be out there. So we, we, I broke this down to, um, to start us off with two categories. Um, the first is gonna be networking within the industry, which will help both vendors and the operators. And then we're gonna talk about networking outside the industry, which will really benefit the operators. Drew, you wanna say good morning, everybody? Good morning, everyone. How are you? Pleasure to be here today. So Drew is, um, as most of you might look at it or have told me, Drew is my retirement plan. Everybody needs <laughs> an exit plan. Um, so with 35 years or actually 34 years this month of operating in this industry, um, I do go way back. I'm not as old as it sounds of the 34 years as um, I started with Chris Weiss and when they started Limo Digest from the very first issue um, to everything that Tracy's been through, um, looking at Bill Battisti and Chris Nolan, we all been around the block a little bit working in this industry, working hard. Um, we'll, get, we'll get rid of the doom and gloom. Um, Yes, things have been hard, things have been difficult. They've been difficult for you, which means they're difficult for us. Our main clientele is the luxury transportation industry. So when you guys lost 90%, 95, 100% of your business, we were right there with you. Uh, we did pivot a little bit to some of the promotion, uh, to the protection equipment, such as hand sanitizers, masks, and things that you need to get your place and your vehicles up to uh, operation. We did that a little bit to try to generate some revenue, but it was still very difficult and it's still continuing to be very difficult. So if there's anything you need, and this will be my one big push, if there's anything you need to get up and operating, give, our, give us an opportunity to see if we can help you, whether it's masks, whether it's sanitizer, whether it's promotional material, whether it's marketing material, uh, myself or Drew are there to help you and we're gonna work with you because your success becomes our success. And that's been true for the last 34 years. Um, one of the other companies that we started in 2012 was Driving Results, which is a um, business mentoring consulting type company. Um, it's peer groups. Um, Tracy's been involved with our groups. Um, I see Advanced Limousine, Christy Carter has been involved and some others. Um, so it's nice to have some, some members on this call as well. Chris has been to many of our meetings. Uh, so what we try to do is we try to just help people, similar to what you're doing here in Zoom, but we do it face-to-face. -face. Um, that's been another way of helping people feel comfortable when talking with others with the, in the industry. That's what networking is. One of the biggest things that I promote is relationship, trust, and business. You first must build a relationship with somebody, whether you're speaking with them digitally or face-to-face, -face, on the phone, through emails, but you must build that relationship. Once you have a relationship with somebody, then you start working on building the trust with each other. If Chris trusts me and I trust Chris, somewhere down the line, we're going to end up, if there's an opportunity to do business, we'll do business together. And that works for bill meeting clients and he needs to build a relationship with those clients, earn their trust before he can even sell. If you try it doing it any other way, it doesn't work as well for you. You can't just go out there and just sell, sell, sell. People buy from people they like. We all know that. We've heard that many years everywhere you go. So if you build that relationship, you earn some trust, business will follow. Drew? I definitely agree with that. That's something that's that's true. And I, I've seen growing up in the industry because coming into the industry, 
officially only in 2017. I've been here. I've been to some of the shows. I've recognized some of you from, from when I was a kid, even there, just trying to help out. Um, and that's one thing that I've noticed is that it, it's th those industry events, these meetings, going to them, whether they're digital or virtual, it is definitely a great opportunity to build those relationships. So whether you get an opportunity to do this in as just an ILLBA thing, but get into your local chamber of commerce, get into um, different events, different associations. If your kids have a sporting event, get into the mom's groups, get into the different groups that you can get in from maybe they have an inquiry on their business. Maybe they have a personal need, but it's just different ways that who you know and what you can do with who you know can really foster and build a successful business. So when you're talking about networking within the industry, I came up with a little list of different things that everyone could do presently from today going forward. Zoom meetings, number one. Um, some of you might be sick of them. Some of you might be still your first Zoom, me Zoom meeting that you ever done. Um, we're going to go into a little breakdown of things that can make a, a Zoom meeting more positive for you and more successful for you in networking as we go on. Webinars right now are still going on. The digital is really taking off more so than ever because people are working from home. People are limited in the office space. So Zoom meetings, webinars, industry association events, just like the one that you're having here. Um, Doug Schwartz just had the, uh, the LIDA meeting. Some of these meetings are open to others outside the industry. A lot of the vendors are able to attend this, especially without traveling. So we're saving a little bit of traveling, but we're still keeping our face and our brand forward. Um, related events right now from industry people have been very popular and very successful. Mike Beretta does the Global Limo Recovery Group on, I believe it's Wednesdays, every Wednesday. If you haven't had the opportunity, jump on one of those. I, I, I commend Mike for what he's been doing. He does a great Zoom meeting, and you'll learn even more advanced features of the Zoom meeting, such as seeing polls, seeing breakout rooms. Um, there's a lot more that you can do with Zoom with the upgraded version. We'll talk about that again a little bit as we go on. Um, others in the industry, the Bill Faith, the Dave Uzel, Eric and Mike Oaken. Um, these are two guys that I just became friends with them on Facebook. They've been killing it lately with their videos. Chris Weiss did a a um, podcast with them about two or three weeks ago. Uh, Jeff Brosley just came up with something. Again, Chris is making the rounds. He, he was on that one as well. Um, but these are opportunities that if you're listening to these other folks in the industry, you're not listening to every word they say. The same way you're not going to listen to every word myself or Drew says, but try to take one nugget out of every meeting that you go to. All you're looking to do is better yourself one little bit today with something that maybe you didn't know. My analogy to that is um, I'm not a big Tom Brady fan, but the way he goes into a spring training is amazing. He looks to increase one to 2% of his ability from the previous year. Imagine if we said that if we only wanted to increase what we did better last year by 1%. I mean, that's how perfection is, is it gets better each time. He's not looking for a 10%. You know, every time we ask people, well, what's your goals this year for your business? Well, I want to increase 20%. I want to increase 15%. Those are large numbers. Imagine going and saying, I just want to increase 1%. These are the things that we're looking at. Uh, Facebook's groups are still very popular. The limo growth group, the limo marketing, the marketing essentials. When you go into those groups, you want to start participating. Just being a voyeur and looking and, and taking the information that doesn't help you or help the group. So when you get involved in some of these groups, add your information. Make sure that you have worthy information. I, I recommend this a lot. Read what you, you're gonna post twice before you post it. Should I post this? Will it affect me? Will it make me look bad? Will it make me look smarter? Will it make me look like an expert in the field? So look at those items when you get into the groups. Uh, and then use all the other social media channels. And there's a lot out there. There's Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and also the LinkedIn groups. Uh, there's so many out there so that you need to really pick what you feel most comfortable with, master that one, and then start going to the others. If you're strictly a operator, you know, Facebook might be a better way for you or Instagram might be a better way for you. If you're a vendor, maybe LinkedIn is going to be your better option. So these are all the different things. So again, anytime you want to you want to network within the industry, these are some of the ones that I came up with a list that will really help you. Anything you want to add to that, Drew? 
Um, no, definitely, but I definitely the points are you need to be out there, especially it, since we're all in the, in the same situation right now. Everyone, the whole world is, is struggling, but at the same point, we all have to work together. So utilize someone else's resources. So for example, like he's saying, if you got Bill Faith or Mike Barrett are doing something and it's working for them and they found a group of people to make it work. Go ahead. There's no harm in joining in, especially if there's no cost in some of these groups. Um, getting onto the NLA has been phenomenal with doing a lot of their 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 uh, presentations online and getting different interactions. And they're also doing like a live feed. So on the side, they're talking during the chats. So they may be hosting webinars, which is great, but they're also interacting with what people have thoughts and questions. Uh, so that is a great element that I've seen that people have been doing, but it also helps you to understand because you're not in this alone. That's what the point of these organizations, that's what the point of these groups are. So yes, there may be a limited clientele at the moment, but use, if someone's got something and they're working and it's working for them, maybe it could work for you too. Just because they're in California or they're in New York or they're in Chicago, it doesn't matter where you are. If it works, you could try it or try an adapted version of what they're doing. It doesn't have to be copy and paste, but if you could take what someone does, adapt it to what you can do given your parameters and given your situation and given your, your staff and your, and your vehicle, Vehicles, then go ahead, try it. What's what's the harm? You gotta you gotta do something, and they can teach you. Maybe or give you an opportunity or give you an idea to influence you or help you to do so. Excellent, thank you, Joe. So when you're networking outside the industry, a lot of the same items still affect um, Zoom meetings, webinars. Uh, another big one for trying to grow your business is get involved with the online communities. Um, there's Facebook groups, there's Facebook mom groups, there's local towns, local communities the local online events. Uh, I see Christy on here. Christy's big with that in her area. You know, you start getting into these Facebook mom groups. You, you, you answer a couple of questions for them. All of a sudden they say, who are you? What are you? I own a local business. Um, it's a small transportation company, 25 vehicles. We transport from sedans to motor coaches. We take care of the local groups, the sporting events. That's a great way to all of a sudden get your name out there. All you need to do is one or two jobs and do them successfully. I will tell you, the moms will start being your cheerleaders for you. They will start telling everybody that you are the company to use in that specific area. It, it takes a little bit to get into it. And again, maybe uh, if I look at this, um, Travis would not be able to get into a mom's group, but you know, work your way into it. A lot of them, you know, if you're a single dad, they'll let you in the mom's group from what I understand. So, as long as you don't beat up the group and you become a participation part of the group, they're gonna take you for your information. Every so often, if you see that something's posted, you know, some, something bad happened or even something good happened and you could donate a vehicle, all of a sudden that donation of that vehicle in that local community group is gonna get you so much exposure and the people are gonna start talking about you. I noticed that when we moved down to a new area in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, we have a new house. So we're looking for blinds, we're looking for a palm tree. And right now we're using the next door apps, we're using the Facebook groups, we're using the local community groups to get these recommendations. Same way when we're looking for a doctor, if you need a dermatologist, an eyeglass doctor, a heart doctor, whatever it is, you're looking for recommendations. That goes back again to what we said, relationships, trust, business. If you get into one of these groups and you start building those relationships and they trust you, Think about the business that can come from it. And it's not a hard sell about your business. It's just talking about what you do, what Christy does or what Rob does or what Tracy does. This is just part of our day. And it's just common in, in talking or chatting with people within these groups. But, you know, there may come a need that, you know what, we needed to move a group of people for dinner because we can't get to the restaurant. Next thing they know, oh, Tracy was in our group and she's at Windy City. Let's give her a call. Maybe she can help. Tracy does that job. And next thing you know, 10 people are saying what a great job they did and that's gonna work out to additional business. Um, utilize the social media channels is a plus. Um, I'm 50% good at that. Uh, Chris Weiss is another one. He, he uses his Instagram a lot for the magazine and for his personal. Build your personal brand again. There's nothing wrong with building your personal brand while you're building your business brand because if people see you personally, if I ask everybody right now, what is, what's two of Chris's hobbies? Can you guys tell me what Chris Weiss's hobbies are? Anyone, if you want to unmute, just jump in. Golf. Golf, okay, and what else? Photography. Photography, right? So you're starting, so 
He didn't shove that down your throat. He just posted some photos of, hey, last week I know he went out with um, John Epstein from Royal Coachman, and he went out with um, from my limo. What's his name, Chris? Howard Gogol. Howard Gogol. Yeah. I saw he was posted because I knew I was on the golf course when he was posting that picture. So we have a similarity. <laughs> so that's our tie-in. From that, he posted um, his last week up with the kids in Philadelphia, shooting pictures of the area. So you're starting to learn what Chris likes, and he's building his personal brand a little bit more with you, and you're understanding that. From that, you realize that, yes, he also has a job. He's a publisher of a magazine. If there's a need to work with that magazine, and now you like Chris, you like his hobbies, you built some maybe an online relationship with him, you're going to talk with him a little bit more, trust him a little bit more, and when there's a business situation, you're going to feel comfortable doing it. That's what you need to do with your businesses. Again, whether you're an operator or a vendor. If you're not promoting your business locally, nationwide, or for some of you internationally, right now, you're going to be forgotten. It's that simple. Out of sight is out of mind. Drew? Something real simple to do is if you can go ahead, find, go online, if you can find something that is to do relevant an idea. So say someone was, I think, um, Eminem Limousine in Chicago. He was doing ice cream socials. He was doing a bunch of different email e-blast campaigns on Constant Contact. He wasn't making fancy e-blasts. He wasn't doing a targeted market. He was just saying, hey, he grabbed the picture of an ice cream cone, threw it into Constant Contact, grabbed the picture of a limo, threw it in there and said, here, boom, blast it out. I mean, I was getting the emails and I was going, oh, this is pretty cool. The different ideas, the date nights, the all the different things that he was trying um, that I did see in the Chicago area, which was pretty cool. But he was putting it out there. He could have sat there and said, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but he was, he tried and he was keeping it in the face to the point that I'm in New York, not even, even in Chicago, but I was getting the emails and I know what was going on. And I was seeing what was happening there. So to the point that months, a uh, couple months later, it's still stuck in my mind and I know what he's doing. So as an opportunity for you, if you come up with something different, go ahead, throw an e-blast. You have an email list, you have your clients, whether or not they're traveling, whether or not they're, they're buying from you at the moment, it is something you can, hey, look what I got out there. Hey, you know, we have a, an incentive plan going right now. Hey, you know what, we're offering this. If you buy five hours, get an hour free. And you know, they might be whether or not they're using it or taking in that opportunity that you're offering, that sales pitch, it could just be the opportunity to, to br keep your brand in front of them. And that's, that's huge. And that's something that we're trying to do too on, on Facebook. I'm trying to throw whatever I can on Facebook just to show that here's things that are available. And I see a lot of other clients are doing it as well, and which is really nice. And a lot of people in the industry, again, but the more you show, the more friends you make, add your clients. If you have a professional Facebook, go on them, make sure that they like your page, try to interact them with every follow-up, say, hey, check our Facebook page or here, leave a post on our Facebook page so that then when they're interacting with that page, if you do something, it then will show up in their activity log. It'll show up in their feeds uh, so then they could see you on there. Um, if you're making something, if you comment on something, it'll be there for them, another opportunity for free marketing. And who doesn't love free marketing? So think, think about the, the opportunities that are still out there. Um, business, they say, will come back. Travel will come back. At whatever percentage, it's going to come back to they're going to have a need for your services. If you've been going after an account and you haven't been able to reach out to them or the people within the company, and XYZ company has that current account, and they're not out there marketing right now, Think of how well you can do just by keep throwing your name out there. Put your, put your brand out there. Put yourself out there. Let them know that you're open. Let them know your safety procedures. Let them know what you're working on right now, that you're available. That might be the opportunity that if they haven't seen their current provider or their current provider hasn't reached out to them, which is a real faux pas, it, that could be your opportunity to step your foot in the door as travel begins. Reach out to your clients is very important. We, we do this on a regular basis, whether it's Drew, myself, Kathy, we're down to a limited staff, just like most of you are. But it doesn't mean that if you, don't make, if you can make 10 calls a day in a five-day work week, you're making 50 calls. At the end of the month, you made 200 calls. In the last six months, you could have called 1,200 people. If you have 1,200 clients, think about it. 1,200 clients could have got a phone call from you over the last six months. Just one interaction that, oh my God, they took the time. I understand they're going through what we're going through, but they took the time to stop and call me. And when you call them, don't sell. Hi, how are you? 
How you doing? I just want to make sure everything's okay with you, your company. I understand we're in rough times. We're in this together. Is there anything that I need to know that will help us so we can help you? Those are the conversations that you're having. You can ask them, are you currently working in the office? Are you currently traveling? Are you just doing online networking? Is there anything that we can do? Did you, not, did you realize that we can help move packages for you if you need to? We can move employees for you if we need to? We can set up a shuttle for you if we need to. If none of this works out, just understand, I just called to make sure that you're okay and let you know that we're here with you. And hopefully when we both come out on this other side, we can get back to business as normal. If you don't speak with your clients, and a lot of people I think have done this, you know, they got shocked by what happened with, with COVID. And, you know, in the beginning, it was going to be a quick three, four weeks. We're now into 24 weeks of this. If you haven't reached out to your clients, you're missing the boat, guys. If there's anything, here's the nugget of the day. If you haven't reached out to your clients, start making calls this week. Don't procrastinate. If you make five a day, if your day is, is busy doing some other stuff, you pivoted to another business, you're still trying to earn an income, and a lot of people are doing that, the, the, the Grubhubs and DoorDash and anything else that you can do to make money, make five calls a day. At the end of the week, you make 25 phone calls. That's 25 more phone calls and contacts with your clients than you did last week. It's that simple. It costs you nothing but time, and unfortunately, I believe most of us have a lot of time right now. That's the one thing that we have a lot of. We might not have a lot of customers. We might not have a lot of phone ringing. Uh, we might not even have a lot of money in the bank anymore, but we have time. That's the one thing that we do have. Pick up the phone and you never know. If that client can't help you, maybe in that conversation, they're going to say, you know what? We haven't really been working, but I know John at XYZ Corporation really came back and he's, and he's doing great. Maybe you can give John a call and get a referral out of it. All it takes is a, a couple of minute phone call. If it's five calls a day, at five minutes, it's 25 minutes. If you spend 10 minutes on the phone, it's less than one hour. Think about that as you move forward. Uh, any questions on the networking, whether digital or in person? I, I just wanted to add, like joining outside groups, outside the industry is a great thing. Um, and the only reason I bring it up is because last, last month's call, I talked to a couple of operators and they just had concerns about where to find the groups and things like that. But there, through the Facebook groups, a lot of times you will actually find other groups. But um, I, I'm, I'm part of a group, it's called Caffeinated Connections and it meets every Tuesday. It's a global group. It's people from all different industries, technology, banking, finance, uh, HR, you know, um, you name it. And um, they do a round table every, every uh, Tuesday. And um, he has a question of the week. And then he does breakouts in the Zoom. And you get to meet each one. And um, it's hit or miss. You know, uh, I think a lot of times, and, and this is kind of what I hear from people, is that, uh, well, some of these groups are wasting my time because, you know, they're not people that want my business. Or blah, blah. But you never know from one person that's on there they make, like to Arthur's point, they might connect you to someone else. Like last week, uh, he is a business consultant, I forget his specialty, I think it's financial management. Um, well, he travels here, but he also he has clients back and forth. So we are already connected and he has my information. So when maybe perhaps his clients start traveling, he knows who I am now. I'm on these calls every week. So I really encourage you to find some. And the neighborhood groups are really good too. Um, I'm always giving advice at least once a week on our Rogers Park one in Chicago. Uh, always looking for mechanics because they're, you know, local neighborhood people and, the, and uh, they know I have a limo company and I'll say, hey, you know what, here's my mechanic. He's awesome. And um, I put two sentences out there at least once a week because people are looking for the tires and you know, that and I know the neighborhood. Um, it reminds people that you're there. Excellent. I think some of the points that you made, Paul, are, are right on target. You can't hurt yourself unless you put words out of your mouth that don't fit into the group or, you know, you bash somebody. You know, again, keep politics out, keep religion out, don't bash your competition. Just become a listener, see where you can add value. You definitely want to participate. If you're just in there and you're not participating, I mean, we have that in our, in our group meetings. You know, when you have a group of 20 operators, and you get two operators that just sit there for the entire three days and don't communicate, the group starts looking like they're no value to us anymore. We need people that want, that we need their input. 
everybody has an expertise. Everybody's a business owner. Everybody has knowledge. You just need to find that. And that's part of my job is to get everyone to talk. And when you have somebody in the group and they're not talking, there's no value. So definitely participate, but make sure what you're saying adds value to the group. Anybody else with any other questions before we move on? Well, something else is just another opportunity that I do want to throw out there that I know I'm trying and I've seen personally work for me over the past couple of years is that if you go through the Chamber of Commerce, sometimes there's these groups called young professionals and they use the word young very loosely. So, I mean, there's people in there that are 50 years old. There's people that are in there that are 18 years old that are just starting out. It's if you're young at heart, that's usually what they go with. So if you check out your local chamber, your local township, and you say, hey, maybe there's something in there, that does get you those opportunities. I started going to one town, uh, the town where I usually tend to go and hang out and spend all my time in. And I said, okay, let's do this. I met some people, met some clients, and then they referred me to somebody else. And then while I was in one of their digital groups, they said, hey, check out this other group. Why don't you come up to this other chambers meeting on the other side of the island? So I went up there and I started working with them and started getting some more people. So again, it's that, hey, reaching yourself out that maybe this is not exactly who it is. And if you feel uncomfortable, there's other people in your, in your company that maybe you could send. If you want to send someone out there else besides yourself, it doesn't always have to be you, but you know your brand best. So if you would like to go out there and put your brand first and help network, then you can do that too. Um, but just again, different opportunities. Didn't think I'd be selling to the local coffee shop. Didn't think I'd be doing things for the, lo the local lawyer around the corner. But here I am working for it. And I said, hey, you know what? Everyone needs something. If I have a product that someone's offering or some service that someone needs, then might as well work for them. I don't care where you're coming from. I don't care what we're doing. As long as we make it work and we could all be happy and, and have a big profit in the end. And to, true, to what Drew has said, Drew has brought in some clients on his own recently because of that, um, whether it's a funeral home, whether it's a brewery, um, the local insurance company that just did a golf outing this week or was getting ready for a golf outing, he's finding other, other industries to work with other than just within the transportation. So again, whether you're a vendor or even an operator and you're an operator just doing corporate you want the vehicle to move. Sometimes you just got to say right now is not the, the time for, for corporate business. Let's start moving that social. Let's find if the wineries are open. Let's find if the distilleries are open. Let's find if the local restaurant, even though there may be 25 or 50% occupancy, can we run a deal with them right now just to get our vehicles to move? You can't get stuck in just the one direction of what you're doing, especially when there's a pandemic going on and you decided to stay in business and you need to generate revenue. So some of the things that we're going to go through, and I'm going to go through this quick because most of you, I think, have this, but the importance of a Zoom meeting um, and some of the things that, you know, some of this stuff might just be obvious and others you're going to be like, oh, I didn't know that. But Zoom has two versions. If you're running the Zoom meeting, there's the basic version. You get cut off after 40 minutes or you can upgrade to their, their other version, which is an upgraded version, which gives you unlimited um, conference meeting time and add some other features such as polls, such as breakout rooms and such. If you get involved where you're starting to do a lot more meetings, I highly recommend for the $15 a month um, or even discounted, sometimes they do it, pay for the upgraded version. It's very little, it's a much better version. The worst thing that could happen is you're in the middle of a meeting and you get cut off. Uh, second thing is locate a bright room. If we look at all the photos right now, we can see um, Derek has a lot of back, back lighting. It's a little hard to see his face. So we want to be able to see him. I, I don't care about the light behind him on his right shoulder. It's very bright up there, so we don't get to see a lot of him. You want to try to fix that a little bit. Um, Bill, I see his sign on his wall. He's backlit. A little more face. I'm going to show you. Yep. Tracy, that's funny. If you see this, guys, good minds think alike. So this is a light, a circle light. This was actually sent out to me from a client, 305 Transportation. I think um, Tracy has one. I think Chris has one. I have one Chris, here. We Chris Weiss, is, his, what's that? Chris Weiss is usually sits on the desk behind him. <laughs> but now it looks like it might be in front of him. I'm not sure. He's, he's well lit. Oh, my no, God. It looks it, like a halo. It, it's not in use. All right. But this is here. So if you can just see it, I'll, I'll turn it off. This is a little circle light. Um, Drew, you could probably explain this more as these young influencers are using this. Go ahead. So yeah, so that's called a ring light. 
All right. So yeah, so everyone is using that. Everyone from TikTok to Instagram to Facebook marketing place to all these different things. Um, that is what they do because if you, if I go ahead and I shut off my light, you see how dark I get real quick and it's hard to see, it's hard to get the, the enunciation of my facial features of what I'm trying to express. Um, so using that ring light does definitely help. I mean, you can buy them online. You can get them fancy. You can get the, the clip on ones to your desk. You can get the big stand up one. If you want the six foot tall, go as crazy as you want, buy them on wish, buy them on Amazon, whatever you need. But again, it does help work if you don't have great lighting where you are. Um, especially if you're stuck in a corner, if your office doesn't have good lighting, if you're at home and you don't have good lighting like that. That's a huge think, thing. Think of it. Think of it. One second, Drew. Think of it this way. If you were at a networking face-to-face -face session and they turn the lights off, how easy is it to network in the dark? It's almost impossible. It's kind of the same way here. <laughs> it's a different type of meeting, Tracy. <laughs> uh, the reason that you're on Zoom is still to get the face so that you can see the person. If you're not able to do something, what Tim is doing right now is, is totally perfect. If he's busy doing something else, but he still wants to hear the message, maybe he's driving, maybe there's something that in his location right now, his image will not work. Make sure you have a good profile picture. It, it works perfectly. Not, to, not every time. Sometimes people wake up and then realize that that Zoom meeting, they're still in their underwear. They didn't get to wash up, whatever. Put the profile. See, there's Tim. He's doing something else. And he, you would not want to do that through the entire meeting. That's one of the faux pas. You don't want to have that... that, that camera with you if you're on an iPhone moving around when you're outside and jogging and people see where you they don't care about that so Jason right now has his image on the inside of the car he was driving before so those are the things it's great to be on a zoom call it's great to make a meeting but if you're in a situation where it's outside it's too noisy it's too dark use a profile photo you can use a photo of yourself you can use your company logo as well just to put on there because Everybody else is looking at someone sitting down. It's calm. It's a little quiet. It's professional. But then all this moving around, it just it makes you go a little crazy sometimes. So those are some of the things that you want to look at. Um, backgrounds. Um, so right now you see Drew is in our office in New York. Um, Christy has her, her vehicle right behind her. I can tell you right now, she's not outside in the, in the outside of the shop right now where that vehicle is parked. That is a picture that she's using. Tracy has, is not in the, um, in the garage right now. We're Windy City. Tracy, are you able to change your background? Oh, working on that right now. I'm All right. under pressure. <laughs> All right, so Drew, why don't you explain the background? So if you see where Drew is, I will tell you guys, that's not our New York office. Yes, we do have a New York <laughs> office. He's not in the New York office today, but that is a virtual background. The same way that the Zoom gives you those virtual <laughs> backgrounds. And look, Tracy just went through her corporate office. It's that simple. Think about if, if you're not in the appropriate location where your background works for you for a Zoom meeting, um, do something that does not take away from you or from the video and something as simple as, look, Drew made this up this morning. I put him on the pressure again. Um, I'm really good at that, at making him pressure on the- Oh, under you have no idea. I've got him <laughs> so under pressure right now. Like his fingers are rolling across that board. You know, so what we like to do is uh, that's, as simple as it can be. You can get somebody on Fiverr to make one for you. We make them for clients. We're gonna make up, Drew, how many um, backgrounds do you have? I, uh, I just did one, I got uh, nine more left I can do for you right now. All right, Ooh. so if you have your logo in what format, Drew? Do you have it in a PNG or an EPS? Something clear, um, All right. that's the best way to send it over. Now, do you want them to add that? So for example, if you guys look on the bottom of your screen, there's a, a little thing that says chat. If you click on chat, another box will open up to your right. There's an area on the bottom right that says file. You can upload your logo there. If you'd like to do that now, Drew's gonna make some virtual backgrounds for you guys as we just did for <coughs> Tracy this morning. Wow, I just learned something. Here I've been, we've been doing emails and drop boxes and instant messages. I didn't know we could drop it there. That's so cool. So in that chat, if you look on the bottom right hand corner, you should see a little, icon of a file and the word file, click on file, upload your PNG or your EPS file. Uh, as we continue this, I'm going to have Drew multitask, which he's quite good at, and he's going to try to make up some backgrounds for you. So same thing, Bill, if you have that logo up there, send it over to Drew. Travis, if you have a logo, same thing. Chris, I don't know if we ever made you one, but if not, um, Drew, you have the CD logo? 
I have the CV logo. All right, hook Chris up with one as well. Uh, so you got to remember, it's like going to a trade show when you're face to face. When you step on the trade show floor, you're in the lobby, you step out of your room, people look at you the second that you're out there face to face. If you're in a pair of ripped up jeans, a dirty t-shirt, and you look like yesterday's trash, people tend to think of you that way. It's just the way it is. For some reason, it's, it, even in our industry, we're the opposite. You guys all love to show up in suits. During the week and during the year, you guys never wear suits, but you come to a trade show and you're in suits and you're looking sharp because it shows that professionalism. Think of your Zoom picture and your Zoom background the same exact way. And I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus here just a little bit, but look at Tracy's new background versus just Beth right now. Beth, we know it looks like she's in a dining room and she's got the big front. And that's great because we all know the situation that we're in right now. But if we took her logo and threw it on a background similar to Tracy's, all of a sudden Tracy looks like she's on the top floor, maybe the 40th or 50th floor of a building. Windy City is cranking during these times and still looking good, even though there's nobody in the office. And it's as simple as just dropping that logo in the back. Tracy doesn't have to promote who her company is. The logo itself will speak the same way you see Drew's logo there, or even Bill has his logo on the back of his wall. So it's, it's just that simple. Also, yeah, because actually wanted... our office is quite dark, actually. <laughs> it's dark? Yes. I think There's it's like quite... very look, few look, people here. Look at the bird flying out your window over there. That's pretty cool. Right? Well, it's great. Uh, so Arthur yeah. has one a backdrop where he actually has it, it has the Empire State Building in the background. And he's in um, Myrtle Beach. So it's two. You just got to look at two. You can present whatever image you want to your clients and whoever you're speaking to. So you can set the tone of what you want to convey of how corporate you are, where you are, what you're doing. So even if you're, you're on, you're in Jamaica somewhere, you're on, you're still working, but you're, you may be in a different location. You can present whatever image you want to present. So Drew, to explain to them how to change their background for what it is to a virtual, what would you need to do? Um, so, Hold on one second. Sorry, I was making some. And I see the logo are coming in, guys, here. which is great. You're gonna before the end of this meeting, we will make you a background. And that, this is why I want you to just take you right now to show you how to upload the the um, background. So, in case you don't know, once Drew sends it sends it back to you, you do have to download it on your computer, and then you follow the steps that Arthur said. You go to that stop video or your video on the lower left hand side of your screen. Um, Arthur, did you explain this part, how to get no, it that's up? That's what Drew's no, going to do right, right now. now. So basically, okay. if you look on the bottom left of your screen, um, right below all the photos, if you're doing it on a desktop at least, it says mute and then there's stop video. Next to stop video, there's a little arrow, a little insert arrow that looks, if you click on that, it says choose virtual background. So from that virtual background, you would then need to, um, it, it says none, you could, there's different ones you can have generic ones or you can click on the plus which means you can add an image and you would just select it from where you save it on your desktop so in a matter of minutes i just went from myrtle beach south carolina to new york city to the office with driving results right there and i, I went to alaska <laughs> the, no, the northern lights so again if you're in, have an opportunity where your background doesn't work for you at the moment during a meeting or you just want to impress with a little bit more. Um, Jim, I see your solid back wall. A virtual background would be a great thing to put a logo on. I don't know your company. So for me to at least see that company logo would help me of knowing who that you are. Ron, Drew, the same Drew, thing Drew already sent it to me. What's that? Drew already sent it to me and Tracy. Oh. So I'm working, oh. they got to send me the file so I can upload it. Perfect. So once again, Drew, just real slow. So on the bottom of the Zoom, there's an arrow to the right of stop video. You click on that arrow. And then we'll say choose virtual background. You're going to click on choose virtual background. From that, once you downloaded your image onto your backdrop, onto your desktop, you can pick. So it's as easy as I can change my image to the Golden Gate Bridge. I can be on that same beach that Tracy was on. I can hop to my creative card office, or I can end up in driving results. Or at any point, I could just cancel. None. The other thing you also want to look at is when you do have your logo, you might need to hit the, the box that says mirror my video because sometimes the words will show up reverse. So if it was reversed, let's see, click it that way, you see the words come out wrong. 
So I'm clicking on this, I'm clicking the box off, and then the, the image shows correctly. Another Any, thing you want to keep in mind too, is that if you are, uh, if you have a static background, so basically if you have something, a wall behind you, if you have nothing moving behind you, you don't have people walking in and out, you're not standing, your, your camera is not faced to the back of a hallway and people are walking back and forth. Because every time something moves in the background, it will disturb it sometimes. Um, so if you, if you see it's choppy sometimes, if you look at my video right now, it's choppy because what it is doing is doing that green screen effect is where it's taking from where you are and it is going to just try to crop your body and it does it live action. It's not always perfect. So if you have something moving, if your kids are running in and out of the room, if your dog it likes to keep jumping up on the desk or something like that, it will pick it up and it won't be constantly static. So if you have a, a, a stationary backdrop behind you, that does make it a lot easier. Travis, is yours a virtual background or is that your home? Can't hear. I'm mute. No, it's virtual. All right, it's virtual. again, great, great, great <laughs> photo. Yeah, that that works. It's 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 blending, and that's the thing that you want to look at is look at photos that are appealing. It works with you. It works with your environment. To me, it looks like you got a half an office and some of your memorabilia on that back wall. I see the dining room with the beautiful light. I was waiting for a dinner invite, man. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is it is very it easy. Does look good. It is very easy to do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Drew do a couple of those um, screens for you right now as I continue. Once he sends them back to you, Drew, are you gonna upload them here? Or I'm gonna put them right them? into here. I'm just trying to get to them as quick as I can. All right, which is perfect. So the important things again is your connection is your most important. You wanna have a solid connection. You're looking at the lighting in the room to make sure, and all this can be done if you go onto Zoom and you just click on when the very beginning of Zoom, it will come up with a box that says um, join, um, or actually it will just say a meeting. You can click on the meeting and do this all in the test mode. You don't have to be on the Zoom with everybody. It could just be yourself. You turn on your camera, you'll see the lighting. You can see what's behind you. You can also check your audio, make sure your audio sounds good. So in my case, at my desk right now, my phone is on mute, my office phone is on mute, my doors are shut, I make sure to keep the room quiet so that you're able to hear us. So the connection's important, the lighting's important, the sound is really important. Um, the less motion that you can have in your, in your video is gonna be really important because it will drive others crazy. And you know what happens, it's like that person in a face-to-face in a -face networking, the guy that's trying to get every single business card from everyone, jumps in your conversation, that annoying person, that's what the motion does sometimes. So when you are moving so much, do like Tim did, still go about it, keep your earphone in, listen to what's going on. Um, so you can test it, uh, make sure there's no music on, make sure there's no ringing, um, because all that is gonna take away from, you, from your presentation. Uh, all the items, again, can be tested. Once you're ready, um, then you can connect to the call. Um, also, really, really important, a couple of things. Make sure at the end of the meeting, when you hit leave, you hit end meeting. Right. <laughs> guys, I know this sounds so stupid. But when the meeting's over and Tracy says, all right, guys, thanks so much. It was great seeing you. We'll see you in, uh, at the next coffee with ILLBA. <laughs> and then you leave, and you don't realize that you didn't leave the meeting. Then you're like, what a pain in the ass that person was. And you know, it's dark. And it's like, make sure you leave the meeting. It's like not hanging up the phone and realize that you were still on the phone as you said what you said. Those are important things. Make well, sure and also not. remember that you're on video, that don't get too comfortable and go out and doing your duties and you've got your phone with you and you're forgetting that you're on video. Yep. Right. So as if you've looked on the internet and you can, you can search this, it's really crazy, but don't take your Zoom call to the bathroom with you. It oh, has Lord. happened. Don't take it. Don't take the Zoom call where you wouldn't want to be. Think of it as the face-to-face -face of a show or industry event or a chamber meeting. You're not gonna show up half-assed. Don't show up to the meeting half-assed. If you do, you're better off not being part of the meeting. It will affect your personal brand and your corporate brand. I, I, I see uh, Paula laughing. That didn't happen to you, Paula, did it? Because I, I keep having people suggest that, you know, you don't have to get totally dressed, just the top half. I'm sorry, that does not work for me. That's a big no-no because the minute you get up to 
get a water or something. Uh, that would be so uncool. But uh, believe it or not, I've seen a few people with a uh, you know, nice shirt on top and pajamas on the bottom. And I'm like, oh, man, you, you, you got to remember that if you're moving around, people can see you. And I will tell you some warm and fuzzy things. If your child is home, we're in a different environment right now. Yes, this is a, a business Zoom meeting, but we all know that we're either working from home, some might be in the office. If your kid pops in the room, it's okay. Yeah. Put your kid on the on your lap, let them see the video. They're going to wave to everybody. Everyone's going to, oh, look how cute. You know, and Chrissy just did it with her son, just came on. If you have a pet, it's okay too. Just don't let the pet overtake the meeting. Some people have gorgeous pets and you put the pet up on the screen and everyone's ooh, ah. It's okay to have that little warm, fuzzy feeling. There's nothing wrong with that. Do it, let it go, and then move back to the meeting. But those are things, you know, everyone says when you post a picture of a pet, if you ever did this on Facebook, you post a picture of yourself, you get 20 likes. You post a picture of you with a pet, you get 50 likes. It just doesn't make sense. Or you put it with, your, with your, one of your kids and you get even more likes. Tracy posted a picture, she's going to get a bunch of likes. She's sitting there with her three kids fishing, all of a sudden the picture blows up. It's just, that's what people like. And that's the part of the business that a lot of people aren't getting right now is let, it's okay to sell your personal brand. Let people into your lives a little bit. It's, it's good. It's the same way you know what I prefer. You know, over the many years I've always posted, you'll see me at concerts. You'll see us at golf. You'll see us at different things that we like to do, and you get to know a little bit about more about me. It's the same way. Chris was very private up to last year. Um, he was not on Facebook, and he held off, and he jumped on. Actually, the timing was impeccable, but he jumped on the right time, and now people – Got to know more about Chris. There's people that, oh, Chris Weiss, he's the publisher of that publication. Uh, CD, yeah, used to be Limo. That's all they knew about Chris. Now there's a whole nother side, and I think that helps Chris. And Chris, would you agree with me? Do you feel like there's more connections you made now that are helping your business as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think everything you've said, where it's, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not using my personal Facebook to market or anything like that, just share my, my, my life experiences and my hobbies and stuff. And, and yeah, I, I mean, for sure. And, and what's funny is, is that, and, and Rob's on the call, he can attest, we, you know, we will post similar stuff on our show for driven page or on my personal page and my personal page will get, you know, 20 times the number, you know, the amount of engagement um, because that's it just works that way, you know, on the personal side. I mean, so I, I don't know how many people know Kristen Carroll from LMC Group. I love following her, all right? We, we have certain synergies in our businesses together. She's come in to drive the results and present it. Um, she's a client that created a card. But I love following Kristen Carroll. I, I feel like she's a cartoon character sometimes. It's just it's amazing. Her photography, her travels that she used to take were still, you know, just tremendous, the photos. And I got to know Chris. Kristen more through the postings that she did. She's not posting LMC. She's not talking about LMC groups or the other divisions of LMC, but I know she's LMC because it's Chris and Carol. The same way I know Chris Weiss is chauffeur driven. I know Tracy has Windy City and so on and so on. When people get to know you, they're going to get to know your company. And that's a big plus. Digital just took a major jump because of COVID. I mean, it's amazing. Everyone always says, you know, with digital take over and everyone felt, you know, it, it was doing its thing, but it wasn't doing it 10 X. Now I think digital is 10 X. That was a little plug there from uh, Mr. Cardone. Um, <laughs> but you know, digital has really jumped to that next platform. It, it has, and people just have to start feeling more comfortable with it. There's some that don't feel comfortable. Some that, you know, they, they get dressed up for their Zoom meetings and their digital calls. Others, you know, jump right out of bed and jump on the call too. All I say is, think about it. Would you go on an appointment the way that you're going to go on a video? Would you meet a group of people at a chamber meeting that you're trying to get one or two new clients? Would you jump on the video that way? That's the difference of looking at digital or the things to improve your digital versus your face-to-face. Face-to-face, I think people have learned. Um, when you're going out to dinner, when you're going out to a networking event, when you're going to the chamber meeting, an association meeting, you're dressing to represent yourself and your brand. And it's no different. It doesn't mean you always have to be in a suit. If I say M&M jacket, everybody says what? George Jacobs. You know, that's his brand. That's his thing. 
Certain people have that. Lime green is LMC. You know, we, we get to know that from seeing the digital, seeing the postings and everything else. I think those are the things that if you, if you did that all prior to getting on a Zoom call, looking at your, your connection, number one, looking at your lighting, looking at your background, looking at what you're wearing, making sure the sound is great, you're going to have much more successful meetings online digitally. It's also okay to use the chat. So if you all notice in the bottom as you guys were uploading your logo, the first thing I did this morning when I went in there is the very top is hello, author. Uh, happy Tuesday morning from Creator Card. Today we'll have Arthur Messina, my email address, Drew Messina, his email address, to answer your marketing and network questions. Think about when you jump into a meeting and you put that in there. Hi, this is Chris Weiss. I'll be attending the meeting today. If you have any questions, that's Chris at chauffeurdriven.com. It, as operators, you must be doing that, especially in your chamber meetings. The ones that you're doing, Paula, you have to put a picture in there. Um, you can share more in there, but then don't overtake the whole chat room. Just enough that if people want to go back, if you said something or they want to contact you, they can go in there, find your email, and say, hey, Paula, it was great to see you at the Zoom call. I want some more information on that shuttle thing you were telling me about. I'm moving people for like two months. Maybe you can help me. And imagine getting that email, how great that would be. But you left your information because once we hit leave and we hit end meeting, you might not be able to get back to it. So if you look at Ron on here, and we saw Ron was on here from the board. I don't know Ron. I'm going to have trouble getting a hold of Ron's information. I would have hoped that everybody, when they jump, jumped on the call, would have put that information into the chat. It would help me. And then what you can do is take a screenshot of it. You'll always have those, those email addresses. It's helpful, especially, again, vendors. Definitely do that because if you said something in the meeting that people want to get back to you on or they need an answer or a referral or something else, it's great for them to have that information. Hey, Drew, how are we doing? I'm working. I'm trying how, here. <laughs> how is everyone else doing? So I see that Drew is sending several different logos out, but I'm not seeing any background. Are we getting stuck at a certain point? Maybe you can go through how to do that again. Okay, so Drew, you keep working. So on the bottom of your Zoom screen, see on the bottom left, it says mute and then stop video. Oh, wait, Arthur, let's make sure that, um, were you able to download it on your computer? Do you have your image on your own computer now? I do, thank you. Okay. okay. So on well, the bottom of Arthur, your- Arthur, if yeah. you're doing it from your phone, is it, you're not, because that doesn't have the same menu option when you- Okay, good point, Chris. So I am on a desktop right now. So on the desktop, there's a icon that says stop video. So when you click on it, so on, on your phone, you should have the same, same information. So stop video, I click on it. It gives you the option to choose a virtual background. You're gonna click on virtual background. So basically what that's doing is it's taking it off the built-in camera. Built-in camera is still gonna be checked, but choose virtual background. Once you do that, you're gonna see the items, the, the images that are available. So if your image is not on your desktop, it will not see it. But once you have that image, you can click on any image and it will just change it right from there. Are so you, you gotta click on that, you gotta click on that little plus mark in the upper right hand corner. Okay. Virtual Thank background. Thank you, Tracy. So actually when you when you click, let's go back one more time. We'll take this a little bit slower, even for myself. Stop video, you're gonna click on it, choose virtual background. From there, there's a plus. It says choose virtual background, you can hit the plus. Add image, you're gonna click on add image. From that, you're gonna locate the image that you downloaded on your desktop. Jim, you got it. There you go. You're gonna nice. locate the image and then you're gonna click okay. That will put that image in your virtual backgrounds. So at this point, I can choose none and it's choosing right from my camera. I can go back to my office and then once you have them, they're all in there. You can change just by a, a simple click. So all of a sudden, I'm in the, I feel like I'm in, um, they shrunk the kids. I'm in the grass. You know? I just jumped to the moon, but then again, we're, we're right back at the office once again. Oh, there you oh, go, oh, Derek. Oh, Derek. All I would say is, is caution what your background is because the, you know, the last thing you want is your clients to say, wow, they're doing really well. I think I need a rate decrease. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jim, where you're looking, you see you're blocking your, your, your logo. So if you position your camera or you shift it a little bit, kind of like here, if I shift, I can now see your logo in there. And it doesn't have to be where it's in your face logo, it's just, it's in the background. That looks like you're in a nice office complex, I see a logo on the wall, it's just it's something a little bit different. Chris, what are you trying? 
Pardon me? Chris Nolan. Uh, uh, I'm trying to add my logo in the background, but I don't have. So it's got to take a PNG file so that there's no background in it. So if you have that. So Derek, I see what you did. So now you changed up your background. Good work. Well, so instead of the bright light, the only thing I would say different, Derek, is some form of light on your face. You're still in the shadow, so it's hard for us to see you. Um, but the background is much better because it's not the blaring lights that you, you're coming in from the background, which is really good. Uh, did anyone else receive one from Drew? I put a few out there so far. Love to yeah, I think um, Dan Baxter, did you get yours? I don't have uh, the correct file. So. Oh, shoot. Right. Either way, so if you set your logo and Drew doesn't get to it now, just put in your name, company name, and email address into the chat so that he can then just copy that and send it to you after this meeting. So this way for your next meeting, I would love to see everyone. Oh, look at that. Here you go, Bill. Oh, you almost had something? Yeah, it's a... It's, it's, They're all going in the chat. I'm just trying to take it up, right? Chat. But this is something, something simple, something easy to do, a little, just a little bit, another added feature. So again, if you sent over your logo, um, just make sure Drew has your email address um, to go along with the company name. If we don't get it at this point, we'll send it to you. And then hopefully the next meeting when we pop on, you guys will all be in your corporate office in some big city or some local city. And it doesn't have to be an office. It could be, um, you can set up something in a gym where there's still a nice wall and you can sit there. Uh, it could be, you know, like what Travis did. I think Travis's shot is perfect. You know, it, it's a little office. It's a little home atmosphere. It makes me feel comfortable. He's standing, he's sitting right there. We see him nice and clear. The background's not crazy. It works real well. Hey, Scott, how you doing, pal? All right. So I think those are some of the things. Those are some of the things that when you are networking, you want to think of digital networking is as important as face-to-face -face networking. Um, if you do digital networking wrong, you're going to mess yourself up. It's no different than when you're in a chat room or you're in a, a group and you say the wrong thing and all of a sudden 35 people start commenting on what the hell did you say or I can't believe you said that. It's, digital networking is going to affect you the same way. If you say the wrong thing, people see it. Remember, once something's posted, everyone is going to see it. When you do things in person, the people around you are going to see it. Digital, I think, lasts even more because, especially with the recordings. If you did something in this meeting and it was wrong and it's recorded, people can see it over and over and over again. It's very important to represent yourself and your brand to the best of your ability. And like I said, if for any reason something happened that you can't put yourself on, on video, just do like Tim did. It, it, it totally works. Um, that's as simple again as um, I think if you click on a picture, um, let's see, stop video. Hey, Drew? Yes. Sir. Oh, there you go. So if I'm not able to show my video, it just goes right to the profile photo. Make sure you have a nice professional photo of who you are. That's the young author from about um, five, seven years ago. I still like that one, so we're going to keep them up there. But that's as simple as, as doing that. Uh, uh, Arthur, how did you get that? Was that in? So I just went to stop on the video button. You just click on it and say stop video. So that so must be in your profile video. that you have to upload a, an image. Correct. It would be a profile profile image. So on your picture box, you can have on the okay. On your screen, there's those three little in the upper right hand corner. There's those three little dots. If you click on it. It will come down with a little menu. There's one that says edit profile photo. If you click on that, it will show you what your profile picture is. If there's nothing in there, upload a photo to there and that will be your profile photo. You can Got change it. any photo you want. You can crop it. I mean, I can do this and, and watch what happens. If I zoom on it too much, you're going to get all that. It's just all fakes. So I'm going to go back. I'll click on it, edit profile photo. I'm going to reduce the, um, oh, don't say, let's see, cancel. I'm going to have to upload it again because I think I just over zoomed it. But if I do it, now it's just all my face. So I'll upload the photo again so it, it backs it off. Um, but it's that simple. Make sure you have a profile photo. So Tim did that ahead of time. 
Most of you should have one sometimes, you know, whether it's your Facebook photo or something, find an image that you have, a headshot, put that in there and always have that. So if you can't do a video, that's the profile photo that will come up. And Arthur, could you men, um, just talk a little bit about, so we talked about networking and, and doing it in a group, um, just several different industries at once. However, how can this, how can you use this same concept for a sales meeting and contacting your customers? So instead of just calling them or emailing them, inviting them to a Zoom. So it, it's as real simple. It's as far as setting up a Zoom call. Uh, maybe Tracy, George, and Kathy want to get on, on a phone call with the, the Chicago Cubs are calling and they got something going on right now and they need a couple extra vehicles and they, they would have normally went down to the stadium to speak with them. So Tracy's going to set up a Zoom meeting, um, put all the email address addresses in there, and then when they come on, it will be Tracy, George, and Kathy on there with maybe three other people from the marketing department, maybe one from the logistics department, and you just have your own virtual meeting. It's that simple. If there's anything that you need to do, on the bottom of, again, from a desktop, there's a share screen. You can always click on share screen. If Tracy wanted to show them something that she already worked on, she can just share her screen and then be able to show from her desktop all the information. Maybe it's a PowerPoint presentation. So in this particular case, we have something to end this with. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation that we set up and let's see if this will work. Uh, so I'm gonna try it right now. We're gonna share screen. Um, we're gonna go to desktop. And you guys should be able to see my screen right now with a mess. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna click on this PowerPoint presentation. Drew needs to clean that up for you. Uh, <laughs> that's another state. <laughs> yeah. Another uh, job description. You recording this, Drew. I mean, I mean. <laughs> You insert. How do we start the PowerPoint, Drew? Uh, if you go to slideshow on the top. Yes. Nope, slideshow. on the actual PowerPoint itself. Slideshow. slideshow. There you go. Start from the beginning. Click on that. And then all the way to the left. There you go, sir. So here's my desktop now. So if Tracy was at the meeting with the Cubs and needed to do stuff, so we have this available. And so this is coffee with the ILLBA. We have today's date. We took their logo. So again, digital is so much you can do so quickly. And if you have someone in-house, it's great. If not, you call a company like myself or you find a freelancer to help you. Here's our bios that we shared with you earlier that um, Tracy gave you the information. If you notice what we did is the footer on the bottom has the ILLBA logo. It has our creator card logo. We continue and this is something we're gonna upload and let you guys read and share. This is from a presentation that Drew and I did in Vegas on the importance of a business card and what to have with it, a business card and then also the correct way to make your business card that you get the most out of it. We will be using business cards again, folks. Please understand that they're not gone forever. <laughs> but then this, here's some different examples, some wording. Uh, we talk about logos. All in the presentation, and you should be able to see this nice and full on my screen. We're talking about the card materials, the different types of cards, uh, the card colors, what different colors mean. Most of you may be never even knew this, but you know, if you use green, it's associated with wealth. Um, blue is a trust. You know, red is energy. It's, it's, it's strong. Black is powerful and sleek. Different colors represent different things when you go to it. Uh, this is information that you should always have on your business card. And then for more information, you contact us. Now, if I just go back up to share screen, I'm going to hopefully get off of this. Uh, stop share. And we should be back to our regular screen and everybody should have their regular screen. So Tracy, in, in answer to that, that's the ways that you can use this on personal meetings. Sometimes it's much better. When you have someone face to face and you have to look at me, we gotta talk to each other. That's really important. If I have you on my phone, you can hide behind the phone. Um, as some people did early before, you saw them like this, they were, they're muted and they're on the phone. They're listening, but they're, are they paying attention? They're really involved in what's going on still in the office and everything. In a meeting, this is just like a face-to-face -face meeting. When you're sitting at a conference table, you can't pick up your phone and look at your message. You can't walk around and you know do the things that you would do in an office. 
face to face, you got accountability. They're looking at you. We're here. If I just did this on a recorded video and you just listened to it, half you guys would have clicked off and said, no, what? I don't need this. Mm -hmm. So those are the advantages of the digital meetings and how you can take advantage of them. And I'm sure a lot of companies are doing that right now. Chris doesn't have everybody in the office. If he wants to have his Tuesday management meeting, six people are going to get on a Zoom call and they're going to talk to each other face to face. And then you're going to see Rob in his place drinking his coffee. Trish is going to be by her computer and everyone's going to be in the different things, but they can still hold the meeting. We do that the same way too. When, you know, the, the phones work when you just need quick answers, but if we need Drew a little bit more with him being in New York, then we, then we FaceTime or do a Zoom call. So it works well. Questions. I know that was a lot, but I'm hoping that was great information. I'm hoping you, you got a little nugget out of it. Uh, I tried making it so it just wasn't operated because I know the worst part for us vendors is we get on some of these calls, everything is operator information and we sit there pro properly, we smile every so often, we'll like give it a little wave or we'll say something um, just so that you guys still know we're there. That's the reason why you see a lot of the vendors on some of these calls is that you don't forget us. So we see Shriver Insurance. For those of you, maybe he has a couple of clients on there. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe you're thinking, you know, this is the time to really quote insurance. And he's on this meeting. He was, he's at his office. He's presenting himself. He comes across nice. If he's smart, he's going to put, uh, Michael's going to put his email address in there. If you guys need any help or have any questions or you're having trouble with your insurance companies right now with deferrals or anything, hey, maybe you give me a call. We'll have a conversation. If he gets one or two phone calls, it might be the perfect thing and the reason why he spent two hours on a Zoom call here today. Would he rather be somewhere else? Most of us rather be somewhere else, but you know what? We're trying to do the best we can. I've set my days up where I have my work days, and in this COVID mindset, there's days where I just, I stay out of the office because if you try doing your office stuff five days a week right now and nothing's coming back at you, it's killing you. It's putting you in a depressed state of mind. So you need to also balance your life and balance your business right now until it comes back. You know when the phones start ringing. You know when the emails are starting to come in heavier. And you, you'll know when it's time to get back to work. So if you're working two days a week now, you'll increase it to three, four, five. And if we can all get back to six days a week. I mean, I keep looking at my, uh, my Facebook memories. Um, you know, we were, where were we last year in Hawaii? And where were we at this, this event and that event? It, it kills us not to travel. You know, it, it's strange that we complained about all the traveling we did and how busy we were and we had no time. And now a lot of you are complaining how slow we are, how we miss everybody. All we have is time. So finding that happy medium in the middle, I think will work. Zoom meetings or Microsoft team meetings, whatever platform you're using will work going forward. I don't think this is going to be something that's going to disappear. If all of a sudden there's a vaccine and all of a sudden there's a change in the politicians or whatever it might be, and now we start doing trade shows again, um, probably in 2021, will digital meetings stop? And I think the answer is no. You're going to find a lot of your corporate office people are going to do a lot more Zoom meetings or maybe equal Zoom meetings compared to equal travel. So even when things come back, try to understand, and this is where you have to look at your business, Try to understand that travel, travel business is not going to come back at 100%. If we come back to 50%, I think that will be amazing. I really do. I thought this in the very beginning was a short term. Now that I see long term, I mean, there's shows that we were attending through the end of 2020 have canceled. There's shows in 2021, in the first quarter of 2021, that they're canceling already. People are looking at, you know, summer of 2021 before we go face to face. It's, it's just crazy. So you need to be able to, to handle the face-to-face -face meetings when you have that opportunity, but also handle the digital. Sarah, good stuff there. I see the logo up there, and that's Indie Trolley. All right, very good. So again, nothing too hard. Any other questions on digital, on marketing, on meetings? If not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see if this works. I'm going to uh, upload I this believe one. I do believe I sent everyone who sent a logo through. I do believe I sent it back. If you sent me one and did not, please just let me know and I'll make sure to get that back to you. But I believe anything that came through the chat went back through the chat. So Drew, would you be able to upload the PowerPoint that I just showed them? Would you be able to upload that in the files? Of course you can, sir. Can that you is do the that? power of Zoom. So you can go, um, same way I, you uploaded those files on the side, you can go ahead and do that same thing, which I will upload for them right now. 
And Drew, do you know why some of the logos, so I'm seeing Dan Baxter right now, and then I think the logo from Midwest for Bill Battisti and Chris Norlin, and how it's coming back fuzzy. Do you know the reason for that? Uh, it could be that something's in the background. So Battisti, um, it looks like there might be something in the background that your screen is putting up. If you put a, like a white piece of paper over that area, just to show like a solid for the camera, it could be the camera's picking up. All right, no, so here's something. Bill, when you go to your settings for the virtual background, is the box that says I have a green screen, is that clicked? Yeah. Unclick it. Oh, same with you, Dan Baxter. No, so that's his regular background. Oh, now okay. go to add the, right. add the image that you want to upload. Click on it. Yeah, because if I, yeah, it's that if I have a green screen, if I clicked right now, if I have a green screen, it does this to my image. Oh yeah. If I, yeah, see, that, if I unclick that box, it makes it a solid image. So Bill, once again, in virtual backgrounds, unclick where it says I have a green screen, and then click on the image that you want to upload as your backdrop. Says the uh, computer doesn't meet the requirements. That's what mine oh. says also. Green screen. Mine says the same thing. Okay, so what is it saying? Your computer does not meet the requirements. I'm, I'm on a Commodore 128. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the other end of your string. That's how we're able to communicate with each other. <laughs> um, Drew, any, any knowledge on that? I mean, you're doing them all the same, correct? Yeah, they're all coming out as just a JPEG. You just upload the JPEG. I did the same thing, and I clicked, um, I have a green screen anyway, and it pulled it up for me. Because you got you got the advanced one in the back there. You saying JPEG or PNG? If you have, so I'm sending you a JPEG to put behind you. You wanted to send me a PNG means that I had a clear version of your file to put on a background. You need a solid background, a JPEG file for your background. PNG means that it is clear, so you could put it over anything. If you put a clear background, it's going to show that it's it doesn't have a solid. You need a solid background. So if you put something that's clear around it, it's not, it's only going to block out what you have blocked on your, as your logo. So for example, I'm uploading some JPEG files and if you see mine is just changing. So I have, I have a green screen is not clicked. Mirror, my video is not clicked. So I'm just uploading a JPEG image. It goes into my virtual backgrounds. And then if I'm talking about promotional items, I can be right there in the middle of my mouse pad and other items. If I wanted something that had an ad with my logo, uh, Let's see, that way, there you go. I don't know how the weathermen do it, but I go one way and it's like, oh, the map's <laughs> over there. <laughs> uh, but you can just click, so it should be a JPEG image that you're uploading. Have you the, I have a green screen box, should not be clicked on, and then you should be all set for it to upload. So hopefully, Bill, that will work. If it doesn't work and you want to call either myself or Drew, um, here's our office number. And again, great way of using the chat room. There's our office number right there. You can give us a call and we'll try to work through with you. If not, maybe Drew can even just jump on your screen and help, help you get that set up. So Fellowship Fleet, look at that, really good. Yeah. All right, so the only thing, Travis, um, you need a little more light on you. Uh, I've learned that from my group meetings and certain folks in the group, they told me how to take pictures with different complexion skin and if you're not under, under, under a spotlight, I know Chris and I have always gone through this with, with um, Tamikas. He tells us how to take a good photo. You just want a little extra lighting on you. So, so uh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And that makes a difference because people want to see the face. That's important. Again, if, if my face wasn't on there or, you know, it's, it's something else, people want to see the person. So you feel comfortable with that person. Chris, Chris is that. So Chris, yours is still checked on that. I have a green screen. That's why it's doing that. So if you could unclick that green screen and then upload your image, it should change it. It still says my computer is not able to do it. So I, I just tried three different versions of the logo that didn't make a difference. All right. So maybe it's time for that new computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what you're using. So that, that part, it I, I'm not any money from the company right now. <laughs> All right, no problem. So Jim, you just did a different photo. There you go. You just had a JPEG image. Now you're able. So now you went through three different backgrounds, which is good. So if you saw how Tracy started, 
Tracy started with one image in, on the island. She went to the garage. From the garage, she went to her office. So you can change it up because sometimes these meetings get t tedious. You know, so if it's a long meeting and you want to change it up and people think, oh, wow, I didn't see him even move. How did he, how did he change rooms? You know, so something like that does work. It's Dan, like Cher doing. It's like Cher doing costume changes. Exactly. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, something like that. So um, Dan, Dan Baxter, it's probably under again your your settings that says um, green screen. Try to unclick that button if it's clicked. Every time I do it, I get the same thing. My computer uh, isn't capable. All right. So that could be a question for Zoom itself. Maybe above my pay grade, Drew. Is that above your pay grade? Above my pay. I can do the <laughs> signs for the background. All right, but as you see, for most of them, it works. Sarah, there's a good one right there with advance. It looks great. Now, all of a sudden, it looks like you, you left Chris and Ken. You went around the corner. You went into the, corporate, into the uh, conference room, and there you are. It looks beautiful. So those are just, again, Tracy, these are just little tidbits that will help. Uh, main thing, dress, sound, connection, lighting. Uh, make sure you leave the meeting before you talk anymore. Make sure you are wearing pants, as Paula says unless you want to get more likes, but it's not going to help you, especially on a recorded message. Nope. Make sure you always look beautiful, Tracy. All right, you got it all going on. Uh, <laughs> and then you'll have successful meetings. I mean, that's really the difference here is the things that we just told you digitally are just some of the enhancements so that you look and sound good. In person, you are who you are. You talk too loud, you talk too loud. Somebody will tell you to be quiet. You talk too soft, they're going to tell you to speak up. Those are your face-to-face -face things. Uh, you know, I've been talking a lot with my hands, but I wasn't doing them up here because I didn't want you to go crazy seeing the screen. So down below, my hands are moving, so you see a little body motion, but if you get to those people that are hand talkers, if I was doing this the whole time, it would drive you guys crazy, so we don't do that. All right, so those are just some of the important things. Open for any questions for myself or my protege, Drew. Uh, again, anything millennial-ish. Um, I know he hates that because he feels he's above millennial. Um, but anything millennialish, anything technology, he's my go-to. Um, Drew is the guy that, you know, during the transition of these last six months, we've done everything digitally. Our entire company has gone paperless now. Um, something that we thought, even as printers, we didn't mean go paperless, but our invoices are, are, are digital. Our um, customer files are digital. Um, all the artwork we do is digital. We keep a folder for each of the clients now in the digital folder. Uh, we have access to our server. We have communication with each other through Google Sheets. I want to use something else. He goes, no, use Google Sheets. And he said the Google Sheets. And it's taken us even further that my daughter who's been with us because her school has been distance learning. She's a grad student over in, in Boston. She's been with us. She took all our personal finances in, and we now have Google Sheets. So it's called Author and Kathy's Life. We click on that. We know who our auto insurance is. We know the doctors. We know everything based on digital forms. So when I, when something comes in on paper, she makes us scan it, put it in a folder, and then I say, I'm gonna hold the paper. And she's like, what are you gonna hold the paper for? We just did it digital. Because she, she, again, the young people, well, it's saved, it's Google, it's in the cloud, you don't have to worry about it. I'm still at the belief that I have to worry about it, so I still wanna keep the paper, and it's tough to d destroy it, but you can take everything digital. So we are going that way. COVID has pushed us much more to digital. It's a good thing once you feel accustomed to it. Some of us dinosaurs, and I'm gonna say the ones that are over maybe 45, 50 plus, whatever, we take a little bit more time getting used to it. It was no different than you know my grandmother who had a turn dial TV. And when the new TVs came out with a remote control, I said, let me buy you the TV. And she said, no. It's like, why can't I buy you a brand new TV? It comes with a remote. I won't know how to change the channel. So some people are stuck in their ways. And she used to like to get up, turn the dial, and she knew how it would work. We don't do that anymore, you know, and our lives are changing. So we just have to change. It just takes us to do it a couple of times until we feel comfortable with it. Tracy, on behalf of Driver Results, Create a Card, myself and Drew, uh, thank you again for the opportunity. I hope I didn't bore too many. Hopefully you got one or two nuggets out of it. It's the stuff that we do. The PowerPoint was uploaded. It says CEC PowerPoint. Um, there's some great information about your business card, your business card design. If you read through that and you look at your business card, see if you fall within the right, the right information. That's a lot of the most important things that we always look at. Those are big subjects over at the trade shows when we used to be in-person trade shows.
but having the right information, making sure that your corporate office or city is on there. Nothing's worse than someone gets your business card and they don't know where you're from. Make sure that you have a personal email if you really want to get response. The general emails, the customer service app, info app, sometimes get a little vague and people don't feel comfortable. But if I'm buying from Mike and Mike has an email address, info at shriverinsurance.com, does Mike really want my business? I want to see Mike's email address on that business card. The same way you want to see mine. Thank you, Tracy. Awesome. Thank you, Arthur. And thank you, Drew. Great information. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. I picked up quite a few nuggets there and I uh, need to work on my profile. Oh, picture. I can't believe what a tough meeting that was. Oh, I didn't shoot it off. <laughs> Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you very much. So I'm going to um, ask Paula if afterwards, if you could just leave the meeting going for a little bit. So if anybody does need to download their pictures off of the chat box, um, you can, they can actually make a copy of the chat too. Okay. So just to give everybody no, no, a chance. Need, yes, Trace, you're right. But they'll need it open for them to download the file. Oh, right. Okay. Right. It'll be open for 15 minutes after the meeting. If for yep. any reason you did not get your image and you wanted an image, email Drew at Creative Card Inc. It's on the top of the page. Make sure your name, company name, and an email address is in there. Drew will get the file set up for you, sent over to you, hopefully before the end of the day. Yes, I do have all the ones that I just sent out today. I do have the copy of them saved. And one, one other note, if you notice in the pictures when you see people's name, mine says author and then Creative Card. Um, Mike says, Mike got Shriver Insurance. You can change those. I don't know if you guys know that, but if you click on it, you can change that information to, to read whatever it is that you want. If you want your company name on there, you want your email address, or you want your business name, that's what people see when it pops up. And so also, sometimes if you're, go ahead, Drew. So it's very important to keep in mind that when you log on, if it's not your, just your sole computer at your desk in your office, sometimes your kids might get on, sometimes your wife might get on, your husband might get on, whoever, or someone in the other else in the office will get on, and it might say something silly. It might say a different name, might say something of a different gender. Uh, just make sure you are logging in as who you are for the meeting so you're not bumping it. So Chris Weiss isn't coming up as Kitty Cat 9 or something like that. <laughs> it's else is on it. You just want to make sure that you There's are- There's something wrong with me being on as Kitty Cat 9? I don't understand. No, not at all. In the other chat. <laughs> in that other group, foul. Chris, in that other group, you are the greatest Kitty Cat man. You are. <laughs> you and that's as simple like as if you, click on, if you click on your name um, on that box, there's a drop down again, it says rename. Once you click on rename, type in anything that you want. If it's really long, you'll see like Mike's, um, for mine, it stops at dot C, the OM is not there. So you can make it sure that in the beginning, mine said author Messina hyphen create a card. And you didn't see the whole create a card, so I took off the name Messina, just did author create a card. So if you're with people that you know, sometimes your first name is enough. If you want them to know your company, so for example, I don't know Beth's company. How great would that be if it said Beth and then her company name? Same thing with Sarah. When Sarah came on here, it said Sarah with her, her last name all together. I would go on. You, oh, look at that. You separated already. You did that good. Very good. So if you do Sarah and then put the company name, that's also helpful as well. Rob could do Rob and then he could put CD on there or Rob's uh, sh chauffeur driven, whatever it is. That's what people will see. That's also very good. James just changed it as well. James, it looks like you got a lot out of today. You changed your background four times already. You changed your name. You got your lighting going on. Everything seems to be working. Just remember the other thing. Unmute when you talk to somebody. Yeah, don't keep talking. I said I know I, know I can go to hiding now. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, thank you again. Um, uh, Tracy, want to move to our next uh, topic, please? Absolutely. So yeah, thank you very much, Arthur and uh, Drew. That was excellent. Um, so the board definitely has been working, you know, the association going through the pandemic as well. We have had to slash expenses as well as quickly as possible. And I think we've done a, a pretty good job of doing that. Um, you know, and, and with that being said, you know, up until March, I believe we only had about 30% of the membership that had paid dues. So, you know, in the last few months, we've kind of been going back and forth, watching other associations, 
knowing this just is not the time to be asking for dues. So the board has been working really, really hard, you know, and what is the best option for our members, you know, in 2020 as well as 2021. So I'm going to go ahead and let, um, uh, let Ron, our treasurer, uh, announce our forward momentum with the dues. And Paula, you can chime in too, um, just to roll out what we're doing with the dues for 2020 and 2021. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, if you have uh, already paid for 2020, um, that those funds are just going to go towards next year, uh, next year's membership. And if you have uh, not made 2020 payments, uh, we're, we're not going to collect any dues uh, this year. And we will um, start that up again next year. Also, uh, membership for the remaining of 2020 is, is free. Uh, correct, Tracy? Yes, that is correct. Yep. So uh, we're, we're hoping to get new members with that. Uh, you have nothing to lose. Uh, sign up. Uh, you can be a member for the rest of the year. And, um, and then hopefully you'll see the value in this and, and uh, keep going uh, in 2021. I'm going to put the uh, membership application here as well. Um, it's also on our website, but uh, I'll put it here for you guys. Um, pass it along to anyone that might be interested in. Um, Did we lose Paula or? Oh, no, okay. Yeah, so like Ron and Paula had said, <clears throat> is that the membership is free for the rest of the year. So, you know, with your colleagues, you have chauffeurs that are driving for you or, or IOs that you're working with is, you know, invite them to any one of our meetings, um, share the correspondence with them, is just let them know that we are your local association. We are, we do have a relationship with the city of Chicago. We have a relationship with the, with the airport. You know, as you saw like a month ago when the airport was closing down some of the booths and, and redirecting us, I mean, we were right on top of that. Um, and, that and that's what we do for, as an association. So invite as many people that you work with as possible. Let's grow our membership, you know, even while we're going through the pandemic. It's definitely an opportunity to continue to grow our association. Um, so we can do that together. So at this time, uh, Paula, if you have some city updates, um, some things that we are working with with the city, uh, if you could update us on that. Um, yeah, so I'll make that real quick because not everybody's in the city. Basically, um, if you don't already know, this, the business affairs office is still closed, but it is slowly reopening. So what that means is that licenses and renewals are happening. Um, the city has asked me to remind everybody that uh, in order to do renewals and new licenses, if, they, if you would uh, initiate those uh, by email. If you don't have the instructions, you can email me or the uh, uh, ILA office and I will get them out to you. And in some cases, once the licenses are ready, um, they're calling folks and uh, um, letting them know. Um, the, uh, also, your, tax, your taxes for the city, your ground tax filings for 2019 and 2020 have been extended. The new due October 15th. Um, I know some, some members are already working on their tax returns, but um, they did move that out for us as well. Um, and those are the major things right now, if anything new comes through. Oh, and uh, city inspections uh, started up again last month. I did get the list of companies that uh, were having inspections, and there was only about 12 of them. But uh, if you think you were supposed to have an inspection, definitely uh, call them. Uh, the schedules were published uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, um, they were supposed to notify everybody by email if you would do for a city inspection. That's all I have right now. Um, would you mind just updating the group here of what we, um, the email we just sent or received from the sure. city yesterday regarding working on uh, license fees coming up in 2021? We've started a dialogue, and that's all we really can call it right now, where we're asking the city if there's uh, could be some consideration for reducing the license fees for 2021 for anyone that was in good standing in 2020 because a number of people have, have paid for 2020 and we really have not been working. Um, it has to go through the city council process. So uh, we'll be talking to the board about that. Um, and at least, uh, you know, we weren't told, no, that can't happen. Uh, we now have to really work on um, getting in front of city council. So time is short, but we'll do our best uh, to see what we can do. Um, I think it's worth a shot.
because uh, even, you know, at, at any discount would help most of you because of the January one renewals and everything else that's coming at you. Um, and uh, they do understand that. So not to mention we didn't work for nine months of 2020. Yeah. And we told them that too. And they know we're not working. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, they're in the same boat we're in. So it's not like they're, you know, they're open, but they're not fully working either. So it's, yeah, but uh, those are the major things. If anything comes out, I am publishing it and condensing it for everyone. So um, they have been on licensing and stuff like that. But if you have any problems with licensing or renewals or anything that you're stuck, uh, just send the ILA office a message. Even if you're not a member, um, I can at least tell you who to call or where to direct it. And, and if there's any of you that are interested in working on some of these initiatives, um, we can put a committee together. You don't have to be on the board to be interested. And it's just a matter of a few phone calls. You might have some Zoom calls, um, but it's just a matter of collaborating and operators joining together to meet with the city and you know, just to see what we can get accomplished there. So any of you are more than welcome to, to help us on these Absolutely. initiatives. Yeah, I mean, at a minimum, uh, uh, depending on the scheduling with the city clerk, we it might be really making calls to the alderman, and you don't have to live in the city to do that. So we'll definitely need some help with that as there's 50 aldermen. Um, I don't know right now which committee our uh, proposal would go to. Um, I'm guessing it's either licensing or finance, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I'm leaning more toward finance, but... Um, we'll be publishing stuff once we know where it's going. So be on the lookout. It'll go to non members and too. And we can never get enough help with dealing with the city because, you know, everything is so simple oh, yeah. and easy with the city of Chicago. So right. anything that, um, any time that you can spare to help us with city initiatives will be greatly appreciated and, and very uh, useful for, for all. So yeah, so it's, not, it's not Tracy, Ryan, and Paula. It's, it's everybody. <laughs> Uh, they know us when we walk in the room, trust me. And it's not because we're just, we have such a presence. It's just because generally it's been difficult. Thank you for reminding me, Ron. But um, anything, uh, I'll keep everybody posted once we, uh, because we just got the information yesterday. So that was hot off the press. Okay. So we have uh, about 15 minutes left. And so this would be the, the time that we can start a round table. So we open up the, we open the meeting up to all of you. So if anyone has any questions or if you have questions for our vendors that are on right now, um, anything you want to talk about, whether it's operations, finance, the city, the airport, now's the time to ask your questions and we can discuss. Hey, Tracy, before you do that, I'm just looking at everyone's name now. It's, it's great that you guys figured mm -hmm. out how to do this. Derek, now I know you're from Cruzapalooza. Did not know that before. Sarah, you know, you changed it to Sarah at Advanced Limo. Uh, Tracy even put Windy City on there. So you guys, you definitely understood how to do it. It's great to see that you made the change. Awesome. I'm going to do mine after the oh, meeting good. because my system's a little unstable today and I don't want to lose this call. Uh, so, well. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been happening a lot. But uh, so what's happening, guys? You can type your question in the box if you want. Um, so I'm going to ask from a vendor standpoint, um, you guys finding business coming back, trickling in. Um, I keep my ear still to the industry. I speak with a lot of people. It sounds like retail is what's pushing the most right now. Some people have had some great weekends where the vehicles are out here in the Myrtle Beach area. Um, I'm, I'm friends with uh, Joe Reinhardt from Myrtle Beach, uh, from Carolina Limo. Um, his weekends, his Thursday, Friday, Saturdays are really picked up. Vehicles are out there. It seems like a lot of weddings and just social events. What is everybody finding as far as what business is starting to come back for you, um, even if it's a little bit? Um, social events. I, I, I was uh, doing our airport report this month, and we're not – usually we go to the airport like you know, 10 or 15 times a day. I think this month we were there four times. So we're seeing a lot of uh, – because some of the restaurants are open downtown – to um, uh, with patio seating and things like that. We're starting to get calls for uh, night, uh, dinners out and um, stuff like that, some weddings, but um, definitely business travel at all for us. Same as Paula, except we'll have like one good week. 
and then it's dead for the next two or three weeks, just about, you know, it's, it gives you a little optimism, like it's going to come back mm -hmm. for like a week or so. And then yeah. also the next two weeks are slow. And Jim and I talk about this every week and Lynn's been, we've talked, I mean, most of my members are saying the same exact thing that it's, it's, it's the inconsistency. Um, the types of business we, I think a lot of us are resigned to what's coming back, but the problem is the inconsistency, which makes it hard with the staff because right now with them not getting the extra 600, uh, my phone rings a lot looking for, and we can't, we have real, a real challenge scheduling when uh, there's really nothing on the books for, you know, a long period of time and it's not consistent enough for them to earn, you know, the minimum to make up their uh, unemployment, if I'm saying it right. So um, we're, we're trying some creative things. Name is on the call. He's just uh, coming back to my team. and He's going to be doing back office and dispatch, uh, but he also has, a, has the opportunity to drive. Uh, we're trying to in to come up with flexible employment um, or your contract situations for people so that it, it's a win-win for us too. Um, so uh, for those people who are flexible, we'll bring them back if they're willing to do more than one task until we get past this. And so far that's been the only way we can keep people moving. And for us with schools coming back now, I, I, uh, it was reported yesterday that we've got five students that we're doing private school transportation for. Um, we really didn't do that before, so we did market to some private schools. Um, so we're hoping to, to focus on that, continue to focus on that. So we do have five individual students, all different schools um, that were taken to and from school each day. That's a new form of business is what I'm hearing this. Even families now that are hiring private teachers. And yes. they're doing these teaching pods um, where, you know, four families might get together and put them in an area and the teacher will come in and teach those four or five different students. Um, there's an, uh, another news report I saw where there's this website where that is hiring teachers and paying the teachers better because there's so many families that want to still educate their kids, don't want to get, let them get behind. So in travel, Tracy, a lot of the private schools that are still open, they're not doing the busing this year and the parents can't make it. So that is another venue, another, another area of business that you can go out there and see. I think the goal is those that are just sitting tight and saying, I'm going to use my PPP money, I'm going to use my ELD money and wait for business to get back, you're going to put yourself further in debt, in my opinion. You have to have a game plan. You have to try different things. Windy City has tried so many different things. I mean, the clients we speak on a regular basis. But there's things that they would never even have thought of that they were going to do that they've done now in the last six months. And some things worked and some didn't. You know, they did the one with the dialysis now, which are uh, moving patients to, to and from dialysis. You know, not all the medical transport people are available. So therefore, Windy City had enough vehicles that they're able to move people to dialysis. And that now works for them. That wasn't their business, but they didn't sit back and say, okay, we're going to sit here and just wait till business gets back and then we'll will pick up from that, you got to find different sources. And I think that's the one thing that a lot of people are not doing is they're not thinking, they're, they're stuck where they are, their feet are in the cement, and you really start to have to start thinking, what else is there? How else can I make revenue? Otherwise, you got to figure out what's your exit plan because somehow you still got to make revenue. You can't live on unemployment. If you're a business owner, you're not going to settle for making less than what you made. So you got to figure out what the next plan is. Well, and I think, I think that's true for, for everyone. Um, and, and if anyone was listening to Bill's workshop, the, what was that, the week before? I lost all my weeks get mixed up together. Uh, the 31st and 1st. <laughs> that's one of the topics he spoke about was the medical transport. Really good uh, suggestions around the fact that uh, you don't go to the top of the, 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 the Google list and take the top uh, dermatologist you're really going to look a little bit lower so that you have some opportunity uh, to put yourself out there. But then the other part of that was to, uh, you know, get a sense of, you know, what areas you want to target and start targeting certain areas. Like we're, we're in the city. So for me, we're not doing as much in the city. We're going on the outskirts because um, most people can still use public transportation and we have a high population here that uses Uber. So, uh, I, I, while we're doing some marketing here, we're not going to put our whole uh, proverbial eggs in the basket um, down here and look at medical transport as well, because there's definitely 
different types of uh, opportunities. And, and I think what was interesting about Bill's presentation was he said, don't want, you know, don't start off with I'm a limo company. And I think we do that a lot. Every time we try to go out and sell, we say we're a limo company, but when you're dealing with the sport, they, he's saying, no, don't say, say you, you, you specialize in, you know, uh, assisting people that, you know, that are, are going for medical treatment. Yeah. Right, we're it's logistics, and, company. and how many times do we just tell everybody, "Hi, we're a limo company"? And I think, um, I think for anybody, because well, for some people they should, because if you're doing weddings like Dan, you got to say, "I'm a limo company." That's what someone's looking for. But when you're talking to the medical assistants in the office, I, you know, so it was good. It's it's a good reminder that we're not changing our identity, but you got to put the right one in front of the right type of customer. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, okay. perfectly. Okay, sometimes my audio fades in and out, so I'm trying something different with a microphone today. Okay. Um, yeah, that is one of the things that I think we all need to explain to people and that, you know, we think we own transportation companies and limousine companies and bus companies, and the truth of the matter is, is that we don't. What we, what we as a service uh, industry is we provide solutions to whatever people's problems are if that's getting guests to and from a wedding if that's getting uh, employees to and from a hotel to their training if that's getting a, a, a patient to and from their doctor appointment you know the fact that we nobody cares that we run a limousine service or a car service what they care about is how can we help them solve their problem mm -hmm. yeah it's a new way of thinking it really is yeah, it is. I mean, and, and even even when it comes to weddings, you said with Dan, um, you know, yeah, he runs a limousine service. Um, I don't think he runs a limousine service. He runs, you know, a transportation business that creates Instagrammable moments. You know, the bride wants that picture next to the limousine. Exactly. I just posted something in the chat room for those, those that are operators. There's a website called Rodi dot com r-o-a-d-i-e dot com mm -hmm. this is a another one of those app things think of it like a um an uber eats or a DoorDash. somebody just bought something at home depot and can't get it to their house they'll go and they'll post it and you have a transit a sprinter a a utility vehicle that can move something from a to b go out there read yourself and see what's out there in the morning some of you have a half hour trip to go from home to the office. And all of a sudden you'll see somebody post that they need something to go from your city into downtown where you're going. You can take that package on the way, make a couple of bucks, drop it off, and you pick it up at, at a porch, drop it off at the porch, and you make your money. It's just another way of revenue. So if your vehicles are empty, somebody in your office, maybe dispatcher yourself, should be looking at this roadie site and see if there's any rides in your area going in a certain direction where you can pick up some extra business, throw something in the trunk, throw something in, in a truck, and make some extra money. I mm -hmm. found this from having a conversation. Again, we talked about networking. Went out to dinner with two couples. Somebody else was uh, this is actually from um, John Olton uh, Richmond Limousine. And he had told me about this. And I never even thought of it. But you know what? If I'm taking a trip from Myrtle Beach to Charlotte, and somebody says, I need to get something up to Charlotte, and they're paying $40, that covered my gas. And all I have to do is take something, put it in the trunk, and drop it off at a porch, and that's it. You take a picture. It's a whole app-based thing. Again, just something different. So if your vehicles are not moving and they're still registered and insured, pick up a package and move a package if it's on your, on your way or in the direction that you're going. You might want to look into that and see if it works. You know, and everyone's mentioning the non-emergency medical, and I just want to, you know, that's definitely out there. It gets a little crazy on... Uh, who's paying for it and when it has to do with insurance and what have you. And we're still trying to figure that out as well. Um, but don't forget, you know, all of your, um, uh, what is it, your cosmetic surgery, you know, your plastic surgery for those, for those uh, operations where, you know, they can't drive home or LASIK surgery, eye surgeries. Cataracts. Um, what's that? Cataract surgery. Yes. Yeah, cataracts. MRIs too. There's, um, we have a lot of digital imaging places down here where, if they had to take a tranquilizer, they can't drive home, you know? Um, yeah. Well, that so, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they no. try to get me to take one. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> now, 
I want to I want to mention because we talked about weddings are coming back and certain events are coming back. But for those that have the retail vehicles, the stretch limousines, the limo buses, the party buses and whatnot, I have been marketing in my area. I'm out in Kansas City. So obviously my rules on what's open out here is a little bit different than what's open in in the Chicago area. Um, Birthdays. I have been doing a ton of birthdays and it's all kids. It's Mm -hmm. eight, it's 10. I mean, we, I did one last weekend where it was a big deal because he was going double digits. The quinceaneras of course are always, are always popular. Uh, Sweet 16s, 18. I, I think quite honestly, the oldest I've done is 21, but I have been doing a ton of kid birthdays and the way that you market it, is, you know, think back when you were a kid. Do you remember who was at your birthday party? Do you remember what the gifts were? I don't, but I remember what the party was. It was a pool party. It was a bowling party. It was a party at, at the time, it was Showbiz Pizza, but, you know, today, Chuck E. Cheese or Main Event or, you know, the arcade places. And you can't do those types of birthday parties anymore. But doing a limousine, I mean, it, that's something that the kid's not going to forget. So, great suggestion, Tim. Drew, do you remember when we brought a limo to you at school one time too? I mean, these, these those memories. That was great, I think. Wasn't think it? about taking you know eight kids to school for the one day in the limo. Uh, you know, right now you want to get people excited about going back to school. Get get a couple of families to chip in a couple of dollars. You don't have to get top dollar, but it's again you're doing something in the community. The kids are going to talk about a great experience. The moms are going to go into the group, talk about what a great job that this company did, brought our kids, made them want to go back to school. Exciting, exciting. And you got people talking about you. Real simple, real easy. Yeah, it's about making, it's about making the memory. It's not about, like I said, it's not about who's there or what the gifts were. It's about, you know, the so, uniqueness of what it is. So for next month's call, um, do you guys want to talk a little more about marketing campaigns? Have you, have you had enough? What are you, inter- what are you guys interested in? Um, you can definitely send me an email about that. Um, but I, I almost feel like sometimes we can never talk enough about some of the marketing campaigns that people are doing because um, I, every time someone brings up one, I learn something else that I need to add to something we're doing. So I find some value, but it's not, you know, I want to make sure that we're covering uh, anything that you guys need help with or want to have a dialogue about. Is it employees? Is it, you know, how to, um, you know, bring back people to work, um, whatever it is. I can certainly come up with topics myself, but I, <laughs> but I would prefer not to. <laughs> uh. Paul, once again, thank you. I saw Tracy had to drop off the call. I guess we're she, at the end of Yeah, time. she's got to go to another meeting. Does anybody what? have any other questions for us today? Well, can we have like an origami class next month? We could, you, you just, know what? Just how to create swans that we can I like saw, place in the You glasses. know, don't even laugh, but I saw something that was so Yagi totally sun. cool. It was a um, flower making class. This guy has got this marketing, and it's really cool. What he does is you sign up for the class, they package up a box full of flowers and, you know, all the stuff you need. And, every, and it's a Zoom call of some sort. And you get on there and the first part of the, the course is to teach you how to arrange the flowers, how to, you know, do the vase, how to clip them, how to, you know, care and feeding, whatever you want to call it. But it's a really great idea because it brings people together to do something at home. They all get the deliveries to their house before the meeting. And it's getting really, it's getting really sophisticated. You know, I, you know, can't do that candle making class you used to do because you can't go, you know, near someone, but you can sit at home and have, you know, all the supplies delivered and, make, you know, learn how to set up a, a, you know, flower bouquet. Life is beautiful. There, there is a lot of stuff that actually is, is going to virtual and I'm trying to pull up for those that are still, you know, trying to wine and dine um, some of their clients. I actually had one of my best friends start a company. I want to say it's called a virtual toast, but yeah, it's a virtual toast and you can get it at a virtual where they will do 
Um, they'll send out some food and give you instructions on how to reheat the food as well as some wine pairings. They'll have a sommelier there as part of your Zoom. And it's something that's really kind of unique for those that are still wanting to wine and dine clients because we can't do that in the traditional sense. And I think, you know, just that sort of, you know, that sort of, of capturing um, or trying to you know, still do stuff with clients to make sure that, you know, they still are aware of us. Um, I think is a big thing and, and virtual is the way it's going. Now I, I noticed, can I mention something real quick for people that don't have the background image? Like when I stop my video and I've got my goofy face there, the, I think the way that you have to create your image is actually going to the zoom website and doing it and tagging it to your account. So for yeah, James so and Tracy and Lynn and Brian, you have to go to the zoom zoom.com and you can edit it there. I do believe I think that's the easiest way to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know only so much, as I was saying with Drew, we know so much about it. And most, most JPEGs work. Why Chris wasn't able to get it, what the computer says it's not working. I, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the virtual background, Arthur. I'm talking about when you stop your video. Like, I've stopped my video and you have, you know, my goofy-ass right. face there. Yeah. Just like like I smile. Is that that's something oh, I think you have to do through Zoom.com. Yeah. Which I, I assume you're correct because I'm in the Zoom app now where you can go on it. On it, on it, on it, on it. I think that is correct. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's creepy. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else? Because we're at 12.05. Thank you very much, everybody. Again, if you, anyone had any further trouble, um, Dan, if, I saw you were still trying to make it work. Our number's in there, 631-584-2273. Call myself or Drew. We'll definitely try to help you work it out. Thank you. Look for our recording tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. Okay. Dan, you're on mute still. Dan, you're on mute. Okay. Um, it, I hooked up an iPad and it works on that. I don't know why it's not working on this desk, the laptop here, but Is you saw I was in it when I had two accounts for a little while. Is your laptop an Apple or a not, a not Apple? Dell. The desk. Yeah, yeah. Apples just work perfect. Apple, Apple, sheeple. If the Apple was free. I took it if it's free for my AT and T rep. I'll take anything for free. Gotcha, but it did work on your iPad. It, it worked on the iPad, yeah. yeah. So just I got, go. I got that link. I put it in the chat for the virtual background help. So see, maybe if something of that device, but that is Zoom specific. Um, uh, basically instructions on how to set it up. So if there's something that maybe we missed or that it works specifically with that device, it has it based on different devices that you're using, you can go onto there and find that. Honestly, okay. Dan, it may be something with the resolution of your, your webcam computer versus what the file is. Could be. You I, said I you assume it's something like that. Resolution of the webcam. All right, Paula, thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Bye. All right, going, guys. Thank you. Have a good Bye. day. Thank you.